All right, Bar Natural Press, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to Yo, go down. Yo, guys, I don't know what you guys just saw me doing, but they definitely were not squats, right? So listen, today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how you guys should be properly squatting to avoid knee pain. Basically, teaching you guys how to perfectly body weight squat, proper alignment that your body should be in, and the common mistakes that you guys are gonna see that are gonna lead to injuries and things like that. So, first things first, I wanna say, listen, if you guys are gonna come out doing squat workout, whether you're in the gym, in the park, make sure you got on proper shoes to start, right? You want flat-footed shoes, right? You, want a, you don't want a he, foot that has a raised toe or a raised heel, because that's gonna take you and it's gonna make your balance and the grounding aspect of the squat, which is very key, it's almost gonna eliminate it, right? So don't squat with running shoes. That's gonna be the first mistakes you guys can make. And hold up a sec. Let me just text. So listen guys, first thing you wanna make sure you got flat shoes. Second thing you guys wanna make sure about your shoes, anytime you see me squatting, if I'm not barefoot, I'm wearing sneakers, I'm gonna be wearing supported sneakers, meaning leather. Those mesh sneakers that you people buy now, like Roshis or those Adidas Jeez. with the mesh, not, not so much those, because those, those got a little bit of support on the side. But the shoes that your feet could move around and swim in, that all net, that give you that breathable air, terrible shoes to squat in, because the second your body shifts off, your feet are gonna shift as well, and you're gonna be off balance, and it's gonna set you up for injury, right? Remember, common injuries for squats, you're gonna get low back pain, knee pain, hip injuries, the second your form is off. So look, guys, let me demonstrate what proper squat form should look like, body weight, right? You want, ideally, you want everything straight. You want to get to the point where you can squat shoulder width apart, knees pointed straight, and you go down and your knees stay straight, right? 90 degree angles, if you guys can get lower than 90 degrees, that's cool, that's only if you guys can work through that range of motion and you guys have the hip flexibility as well as the ankle mobility, right? So I'm slightly past 90, here I'm at 90, now I'm coming all the way up, right? So you guys want to get to the point where you guys can squat straight footed, straight knees. What you'll see most people do is they'll squat with their feet out. This is due to limited range of motion in their ankles and it's gonna also prevent them from ducking in, right? So people tend to flare their feet out a little bit to force their knees to drag out, right? So one thing you don't wanna do ever in a squat is have your knees collapse. So one thing you're gonna see a lot of people do, especially if they start doing repetitions or doing them under fatigue, or they're trying to bang them out for speed, their form's gonna be the first thing to break down and they'll start going, their knees will come in like this, right? One, that shows that you have no control, no mind-muscle connection to the actual work, to the quad muscles, and it's gonna show that you have very bad stabilization of the knee joint and ankle, remember, if you have pain in the hip or something from squatting, it may not be hip pain. It may be due to the fact that you have bad mechanics of the foot or the ankle. So you always wanna make sure you got all that down to start. So one thing I'll mention, people will buy what's known as squatting shoes, right? What are squatting shoes? They're flat-footed shoes, but the heel on the inside is elevated, so your foot is slightly on an angle like this. The shoe is like this, but it's still flat, right? But your heel is elevated. So let me show you over here. Picture, you'll see people squatting and they'll put plates under their feet or they'll buy what's called like a squat board or a slant board to put their ankle and their feet at an advantage so they can go deeper, right? Because ankle mobility is very key in getting into a deeper range of motion for squatting. So now look guys, my toes are lower than my heel. It's very easy for me to come down in this position now. But now if I'm here, I need a lot of ankle mobility in order to get down to that position. That's a lot, that's one thing people don't have is that ankle flexibility or mobility. So, to avoid pain, you guys wanna first learn the proper movement patterns. And the best way to do that is, in my opinion, isometric holds, it's gonna teach that mind-muscle connection. Remember what I said, guys, you guys wanna get to the point where you guys can stand straight-footed, shoulder-width apart, watch my knees, guys. I'm not gonna flare them out, they're not gonna duck in. Head up, chest up. Whole posterior chain is gonna be activated. Remember, guys, squats are a lower body movement, but you need to have posterior chain activation and your upper body has to be engaged, right? Or else your squat's gonna look like this. But you'll see people doing, right? 
almost like people doing push-ups with their torso, right? We're not squatting like this, guys. Squat. Everything straight. One line. Look, guys. Joint angles. Holding. Head up, chest up. The second you guys lose posterior chain activation, that's when you're going to start coming down to here, right? You're going to have no activation of the posterior chain. So what? One exercise that I train all my clients to do, and it goes with a warm-up, and it also goes with any um, assessment that I have a new client do, is I'm going to test their shoulder range of motion. Because remember, guys, if you guys are squatting in the gym using a barbell, right, you guys are going to have to get your shoulders into external rotation. If you guys want to get into more advanced barbell movements like you see CrossFitters doing, and sub, such movements like overhead squat positions, you guys are going to need a lot of shoulder mobility, strength, and posterior chain activation, specifically the traps, the rhomboids, the erector spinae. Remember, the erectors are all down here. Because again, if you're coming, if you're letting your uh, torso collapse, you have no engagement of the posterior chain. Posterior chain meaning, again, traps, rhomboids, scapula, erector spinae. So one exercise I recommend everybody do. Remember, shoulders are probably the biggest joint or the most important joint in any type of exercise, right? Because they're always going to be involved. Unless you're doing bodyweight squats like this, the only time you're not really using the shoulder joint, right? But if you're doing barbell squats, your shoulder joint is active, has to be engaged, right? So I teach all my clients to strengthen their posterior chain by using a band and focusing on overhead squat mobility. So look, guys, first thing you want to do is get this band over your head and through. So look, the band is not in front of me. The band is not behind me. It's My head is right through and it's slightly keeping my shoulders pushed back as opposed to rounded forward, right? So first thing you guys want to do is grab a band with tension. Now, watch my feet, guys. My feet are, staying, are going to stay straight. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to stop at 90 degrees. Look at my torso. Look at my upper body, right? Everything is straight and aligned, right? If I was to come forward like this, that means I lost the activation of the, of the muscle of my back. So now look, to correct it, now I'm here again whole posterior chain is activated, you want to come up, squat in this position. Working on being able to squat, and remember guys, when you're learning it, you don't got to go low. The lower you go, that comes with hip flexibility, ankle range of motion, and learning the movement over time. So the first thing I want to see clients get to do is here, and just slightly squat back a little bit, maintaining this posture, come back up. Next set, we'll go down slightly lower, come back up. Key thing, guys, you always want to make sure that your knees are not collapsing. That's the one cue. Yo, Jean Carlo, peace, my bro. Okay. That's the one cue that I'm very big on. That's gonna. That's the one a common mistake that many people will make that will cause a lot of injury. So you'll see people squatting down. Their knees are coming in like this. Once their knees come in, you're pretty much losing activation all over. Hips are gonna become tight. Ankle mobility is gonna hurt. Back is gonna start to hurt. Lower back is gonna start to hurt. You're gonna just be putting yourself in a very bad position. So when it comes to isometric holes, that's a standard warm up. You guys wanna warm up the post of your chain with those overhead squat drill, right? Now to start building up mind muscle connection, stability in the knee joint, flexibility in the ankle joint. Now guys, you wanna start slowly over time, walk this way, guys, just going down. And like I said, the focus is to start, you wanna keep your feet as straight as possible. So train them that way, right? You don't gotta rush into a full rep. If you start training with your feet ducked out, the more you train with your feet ducked out, the more comfortable and the more common that pattern's gonna be for your body, right? So the more you train in a specific way, that's gonna be more comfortable for you, right? So you guys wanna train with proper mechanics, just do them the right way and take it slow. So feet straight, knees pulling it straight. First thing I wanna see you guys do, just squat down to here. You don't even have to go, pet, go to 90. Look, squat, hold. Make sure those knees stay straight. Holding this for time, what's gonna happen, you're gonna notice the first thing that's gonna happen when you start the fatigue is your knees are gonna start to shake and then your knees are gonna wanna come in. The second I see that happening, I say, all right, come up, set is done. We'll rest a good minute, 90 seconds. I'll say, all right, let's try it again. Let's go slightly lower. Okay, let's get to here, hold. Hold 15, 20 seconds. Once they start getting weak and they start feeling their, once the quads start, getting tense and they start getting that lactic acid buildup. First thing that's gonna happen 
is their knees are going to drop in and then they're going to start losing that squat position and they're going to fall down, right? That's what you want to avoid, guys. You want to work proper movement patterns. So as soon as you start to feel your muscles give out in this position, come back up and the set. Every time you go back down into that hold, you guys want to focus on, remember, isometrics. Ideally, your body wants to be at 90 degree joint angles. That is the most healthy position for your joints to be in. 90 degrees meaning perfect angles, right? So this is a 90 degree squat. This is a deep squat. Once I deep squat here now, guys, tension is off the quads compared to where it is here. Right here, I have full tension in the quads, full force production through the knee joint. Everything is, is lined up optimally. The lower I come, the harder it is to generate force from that bottom position. It takes time and it takes practice to get into that position. So the first thing you guys want to do is just get strong at 90 degree isometric holds. Look at my torso, guys. Everything is held upright. That's why I'm very big on keeping the hands out in front of you like this. It's going to almost force you to maintain that head up, chest up posture. You want to hold 90 degrees? Come up. Remember, holding those isometric holds, it's going to force your body to feel the muscles contracting and having to stabilize. Because like I said, the first thing that's going to go when you get fatigued now is your knees are going to start to bend. And once you notice your knees start to give in, the cue to yourself is stop the repetition and come up. Remember, isometrics, eccentric holding is going to be the best thing that you guys could do to feel a muscle contract and work. Negative repetitions under control is goes for any movement, whether you guys are trying to learn dips. Like if you guys can't do pull-ups yet, right? What would I tell you? What would I tell a lot of people to do? All right, let's do a jump up rep and let's control the negative down. Because when you control that negative down, what are you doing? You're feeling the whole latch stretch out. It, same thing goes for legs, guys. So now over time, once you guys get comfortable at 90 degrees, now you can start to slightly go lower and lower and lower. But now look guys, once I come to here and I'm in this full squat position, there's no more tension on my quads, right? All the load is now being placed through the ankle joint, the knee joint, and on the hips. So if you guys don't have strong ankles and knees, and you guys going down into this 90 degrees, past 90 degrees, if you have a load on your back, think about it, guys. Look, I'm here now. It's very hard to keep this posterior chain activated. So if you guys are squatting down with a load, the second you come down here, that whole load is going to compress on your lower back. So if you guys see, me personally, I will never do heavy squats past 90 degrees because it puts you at a very compromised position when you have a load on your back, right? Remember the lower back, the lumbar spine, if that gets injured, it's going to damper, it's going to hinder almost all your performances, right? Because that has to do with your core going to have to do a lot of movement. It's going to come from there. Just walking in general is going to be hard. Bending over is going to be hard. So you guys want to avoid anything that's going to compromise the lower back. So you'll see people talk about ass to grass squats. I'll do ass to grass squats with a load that I can comfortably control. So if I can't get down into full night here, look, this is me engaging the whole posterior chain, right? If I can't maintain a load like this, if a load's too heavy, what's going to happen is when I get to this bottom, it's going to make me collapse. I'm going to lose all the tension. And now when I have to come up out of the hole, what's going to happen? My butt's going to shoot up first. I'm going to lean forward and I'm going to be stressing the lower back. The last thing that you guys want to do. So eccentric isometrics for learning squat position, in my opinion, is very key. And then guys, you don't want to go, remember, you don't want to jump ahead of yourself. What's up, Joe? When you guys start doing pistols, oh, see my legs are fatigued. I did legs yesterday, guys. Go on my Instagram, go on my story on uh, <laughs> YouTube. I was doing 290, 290 pounds, five sets of one rep, plus a full leg workout after that when I was doing more volume. So my quads are pretty fried right now. But look, guys, once you guys start doing single limb work, pistols, the balance and everything is going to become harder. So if you guys can't do regular, clean, body weight squats for repetition where your knees stay straight and your hips don't break the line and you and you and you don't lose tension there's no way you guys are gonna be able to perform pistols 
properly. Just look, watch guys. Watch the left knee. Watch it stay in the line. Oh, it fell right there. But see, look, I'm still, still keeping that knee joint straight. The second, if I was weak, it would start coming in. It's gonna cause knee pain, hip pain, and again, you may not notice the pain in the knee. You may notice the pain in the hip or the ankle, or if you have pain in the hip or the knee, it may be coming due to the fact that you have a weak uh, ankle joint or a weak hip joint. So guys, everything over time, control the full movement. Once you guys get good at the 90 degree holds, go down to 91 degrees. Then go down to a little lower. There's no need to go from 90 and then try to get ass to grass. Everything is range of motion. And don't start at 90. Start here, get down to here. Come up. Always making sure you're focusing on training the proper movement patterns. Feet straight, knees straight. Squat to here, come up. Squat to here, come up. Always maintain feet pointed straight, knees following the, the uh, toes, right? Now you'll see people saying, knees over toes, you shouldn't squat knees over toes. Listen guys, if I'm squatting, right now my knees are just pretty much in line with my toes, but the deeper I go, they're gonna go slightly over the toes, right? But as long as I can maintain control, it's fine. If you start coming up like this now, guys, look, squatting down and you guys are now look at my look at my heel guys my heels coming up if you guys are wearing running shoes that's gonna just almost guaranteed to happen not due to your mechanics due to the mechanics of the shoe now because naturally that heel is lifted you never want to do that that's gonna really stress the knee joint that's gonna put a lot of that's gonna instead of taking the load through the quads now it's gonna put the entire load on your knee joint so the second you guys come down if your heel lifts, that means you are lacking the ankle mobility. What's going to prevent that is building up this ankle mobility. And how can you do that? You can work on just getting into these over time, lower and lower squats, keeping the foot completely flat on the floor. Because now look, the second I shift forward, now all this weight is coming onto my knees. So when you see knees over toes with your foot elevated, that is bad. But if you got someone squatting, knees over toes, flat footed, that's fine. People have different uh, long limbs, right? If their shin bone is longer, naturally they're, they're gonna go a little farther over. If you see people squatting with squat shoes or on a slant board, look guys, the angle of the ankles now is gonna force your knees. Look at my knees now, guys. My toes are still, my knees are still straight, but now my knees are over my toes, but in a comfortable, and my, my quads are still loaded. The load is not running through the joints. But now look, if I shift forward here, look, ankles come up, load starts shifting to the knees, right? So you wanna make sure you can maintain this posture, this position, head up, chest up, always head up, chest up. That's what's gonna force all the work to stay through the legs and the quadricep muscles. So, it all comes down to learning the proper movement mechanics, right? Don't want to rush the exercise. It goes for anything that we're learning. Dips, pull-ups, push-ups, negatives, time under tension, isometric holds, in the proper position is going to teach you the best way and the best uh, possible joint angles for your body. And like I said, you don't have to go right into 90 degrees. Remember like I said, 90 degrees is full tension on the muscle and it's optimal joint positioning for the joints and joint health. But like I said, if you can only squat to here to start, that's fine. You still got your quads are still getting stretched down on the eccentric. You're loading the quads, holding this position. We're not getting anywhere near 90, but we're teaching the body proper mechanics. So over time, this position is going to get very easy for you. Then you'll be able to squat slightly lower, maintaining that proper mechanics. So again, it's stages, it's levels. Everything is a progression. And one more thing, so you guys can see from here. So. Box squats, right? Another tool you guys can utilize to help you feel the position. Because now, people might be squatting and they may not know where 90 degrees is, right? Or they may not know their range of motion. So what I do, I'll test people. I'll say squat to the bench, sit up. And if a lot of people can't even get that low, so what will I do? 
let's just say I have a bunch of books or a bunch of plates. Pretend that's two plates now. So now instead of having to squat all the way down there, your cue is touch the water bottle, then come up. Touch the bottle, then come up. And you guys can see we're decreasing the range of motion, but practicing proper form, proper mechanics. So now when that gets easy, move the bottle. Now you go a little lower. And now look guys, what's the next progression from there? A lower bench. This bench is gonna put me past 90 now. So now once you get good, now you have another cue. You guys can squat straight down to this bench. You know that when you get here, you're just past 90, you come up, you're good. So look, here I'm squatting slightly higher than 90, easier range of motion, tap, up. Once you get good there, again guys, boxes or benches are great for cues so, you, so your body knows, one, it's not gonna fall down if you don't hit the squat. You're not gonna just go down too low. And again, it's gonna give you a reference point of where your current range of motion is. Very easy to always manipulate, right? So if you only have a low bench in your park and you can't get down that low, you guys can stack up some textbooks, some books, some weights. Stack up a water bottle. Go get a gym bag or a couple pieces of clothing. Stack them up. Stop at that mark. Come up. It's all progressions, guys. The faster you try to jump into a workout without proper mechanics, that's what's going to lead to injury. So as long as you train smart and hard, you're going to get all the results you want. And like I said, there's no need to go ass to grass squats. It's not necessary to go past 90. 90 degrees is optimal. You're going to have full tension on the quads. Only do it with loads that you're comfortable with. Make sure you have a strong posterior chain. Properly warm up the shoulder joint before getting into the movements. Make sure, again guys, make sure you're working in the range of motion that you're comfortable in. So it may take two weeks. You may be stuck squatting like this for two weeks. But after, after repetition, remember guys, that's why it's very important to constantly practice the movement, right? Any type of movement is an adaptation to the body. So learning the dip, over time you just get better and better at dips. Doing push-ups, over time you're gonna get better and better at push-ups. Doing squats, the more and more you do them, the better and better you're gonna get. And that's the thing, guys. People typically, especially in the calisthenic community, tend to skip out on legs because they'll come to the park and everything here is designed to do upper body work. We got pull-up bars, we got push-up bars, we got monkey bars. There's not, a, there's not a squat machine here, right? There's not a leg machine here. So people tend to skip it. But look, it's very important to have a balanced body. Strong legs are gonna be, are gonna increase the strength in the body overall, right? Um, next time I'm with George, I'm gonna do a full leg workout for you guys. I just filmed one on my channel. I did a live leg workout two weeks ago when I won my best, but it could be done by the way, and that was a fire-ass leg routine. It murked my legs. And uh, I hope this helped you guys out. Gave you a little insight of how you guys should be properly squatting, proper mechanics for the squat, and what to avoid. Remember, people, they'll duck their legs out to avoid having the legs go in, right? But the more and more you practice like this, the more and more that's become your standard. You guys should have, you guys should aim or have a goal of getting proper squat form with good mechanics. Because guys, we don't walk ducked out, right? We don't walk like that. You walk with your feet straight, everything in line. So teaching the body how you should pop and properly squat it should be everybody's goal. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget, leave a comment in the comment section. Leave a question, I'll get back to you. I always answer back. Don't forget, subscribe to That's Good Money channel. Subscribe to my channel, Bar Naturals on YouTube. Gene will put the links in the description. Like always, guys, we appreciate your support and peace out. Bar Naturals. Thanks a lot, friends. For sure.